Okay, so our next speaker is Christoph Harach from University of Vienna, and he will uh, tell us about Poisson trans transforms adapted to BGG complexes. Thank you very much. Um, one thank, first of all, the organizers, so Katja, Meet and Pavel, for the opportunity to speak here and for the invitation, and of course, for the organization. So uh, my talk is divided into two parts, basically. So for the first part, um, I'm considering BGG complexes. I will also recall them first and show how um, we can relate them via intertwining operators to the geometry on symmetric spaces. And for the second part, I will explicitly construct such operators, uh, such intertwining operators via Poisson transforms. So if we recall first the conformal compactification, um, as we heard it in Rod's talk, so um, we consider the conformal sphere of dimension m plus one, and then there is a natural action of the SO m plus two one, and I take the connected component just to be on the safe side basically. Then every choice of a, a tractor with length one give us a symmetry breaking and um, a natural action of the stabilizer of this tractor um, on the sphere, which is isomorphic to SO M plus S11. And um, if K is the maximal compact in G and P the parabolic, then um, we get uh, three orbits, two of them are open um, and isomorphic to the real hyperbolic space, um, G mod K, and we have, they have a common boundary, which is a conformal sphere and thus isomorphic to G mod P. So more generally, if um, we take a connected semi-simple Lie group, G, uh, K, it's maximal compact, P, any parabolic, and we assume that G mod K is, K is of non-compact type, just to have kind of a boundary, um, then we can view G mod P as at least part of the boundary of the symmetric space G mod K at infinity in some sense. Um, now, the topology and geometry of these two spaces are quite different, right? So on G mod K, this is a complete Riemannian manifold, or complete, yeah, Riemannian manifold. So there are a lot of invariants. There are a lot of um, natural differential operators because in every vector bundle we can find such invariant connections and invariant inner products. On the other side, on G mod P, this is a compact manifold, so topology topologically quite nice. But um, as Rod mentioned, and as we probably all know, um, local invariants and natural differential operators, operators are quite rare on those spaces. Um, and this boundary relation, so to, to view G mod P as kind of a boundary of G mod K was actually exploited, for example, to find joint eigenfunctions for invariant differential operators on G mod K by the group around Helgerson. Um, but they rather disregarded the geometry on G mod P. So they usually view G mod P or the boundary just as a sphere, as a Euclidean sphere, for example. And um, one very important example of natural differential operators on parabolic geometries are, of course, given by BGG sequences or, in the homogeneous case, by BGG complexes. And since I want to work with them, I should recall probably their construction because we need it later. So um, BG complex. So one ingredient is we have to take a tractor bundle. So uh, let V be a G representation and V its associated vector bundle, which carries a natural flat G invariant connection. And this in the usual way also includes, uh, induces a covariant exterior derivatives. Um, and one feature of parabolic geometries is that the cotangent bundle is not only a vector bundle, but actually a bundle of nilpotent Lie algebras. So the differentials um, in Lie algebra homology induce equivariant bundle maps, which are denoted by del star. And these are precisely the del stars which appeared yesterday in Dennis's talk. Um, so the bundle maps from the k fixed theory part of the cotangent bundle tends it with V to one dimension lower, and they are usually called the constant co-differential, rather than differential, but that's histor has historical reasons. And um, yeah, since this is a differential, so the kernel of del star k is, um, the image of del star k plus one is um, 
a subbundle of the kernel of del star k, and both of them are gene variant subbundles. So we can define the G bundle, which I denote HK, which is just, just the quotient of those two. Now, um, the main feature or the, 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 the main ingredient for um, the BTG complex to, to exist is uh, the existence of a unique natural differential operator, usually called L, which maps sections of these homology bundles to sections of the kernel of del star, and with, which is characterized by these properties. So maybe um, it's, it's um, better if, if we look at this uh, diagram here. So we have the uh, differential forms here, the covariant exterior derivative um, going up, the co uh, coast and co-differential going down. In there, we have sections of the kernel of the coast and co-differential, um, pi the natural uh, projection. And then this L has the property that first it splits the natural projection. And second property is simply um, if we apply L and then the covariant derivative, we usually would end up in this space, but this, um, this condition uh, ensures that we are really back again in the kernel of del star. So what we can do now is we can take an element in here, apply L, apply the covariant derivative and project down. And this induces operators, which I denoted by the EKV. And this is simply the kth BGG operator. And this lower line here is the BGG complex. So in, you can define this for also in the curve case. In the curve case, it is usually just a sequence. But since we are in the homogeneous case, it's really a complex. OK, and now our, our aim is basically to relate the BGD complex to differential forms on G mod K. So what we do is we take a natural vector bundle over G mod K. And we assume that there is a smooth intertwining operators mapping K forms on G mod P with values in V to L forms on G mod K with values in W. And um, yeah, one way we could, uh, what we, we could do now, if we had such an operator, we could just use an element in here, apply L and then apply phi to get an element, to get differential forms on a uh, differential form on G mod K. But um, we rather want to really include this compatibility into the map phi itself. So what I, also assume is that it's trivial on the image of the coast and co-differential and also trivial on the image of this composition. Because in this case, then um, five factors naturally to a G equivariant map from um, sections of the homology bundle to K forms on G mod KW. And the nice thing is um, this satisfies that if you take any section of in here, then you can compute the image of this section simply by um, applying phi to any representative uh, of sigma itself. So, so it, this is basically a natural factorization to the uh, BGD complex. And the second um, condition here ensures that if you take um, any section in here, you apply the k, k minus first BGD operator and you apply this. Um, this induced map, then this is simply computed by choosing any representative of tau, applying the exterior derivative, and uh, applying phi. So this is kind of a natural way of, of um, guaranteeing that phi is uh, compatible with the BGG complex. Um, so this naturality, so what happens on the other side? So what does this definition or this, this condition mean on the other side, on the side of G mod K. And for this, we, um, in order to ensure that such intertwining operators really exist, we should not um, take any natural vector bundle over G mod K, but rather track the bundles again. So again, vector bundles, which are induced by G representations rather than K representations. 
So we take W an irreducible G representation and look at this associate vector bundle. Then again, we have a tractor connection and a covariant XT derivative as before. And additionally, there is a unique inner product which is compatible with the Cartan involution. So satisfying this relation uh, where X is in the Lie algebra of G and W are elements in the representation. And using this, we get, as usual, an invariant bundle metric um, on this bundle and thus a Hodge star operator, an L2 inner product on the space of differential of W valid in differential forms. And we can, in the classical way, define the covariant co-differential to be the formal joint of the uh, covariant exterior derivative and also the covariant Laplacian. Um, Maybe one remark, usually um, when people do geometry on symmetric spaces, they consider irreducible vector bundles because every vector bundle on GMOK naturally splits into reducibles and on each irreducible vector bundle, you have a unique um, invariant connection. You have basically a unique, um, up to positives, uh, a unique inner product and usually this these are the data used to, to do analysis or geometry on those. Um, we are sticking with the tractor calculus because we have the following theorem. So if we consider intertwining operators, which um, between K forms and G mod P and L forms and G mod K, whose values are in the tractor bundles induced by the same irreducible G representation, then then, the, then we have the equivalent. So the image of phi is zero under the, or the image of phi is harmonic under this um, Laplace we just defined. And um, phi satisfies the relations we just, or the conditions we, um, we had before. So in this case, we say that phi is BGG compatible. Okay, so we see that um, this, this notion of BG compatibility, we, or these, these two conditions, which is, um, which is assumed, um, has, is actually very natural regarding the geometry on G mod K. Um, but, I mean, the theorem is quite nice for itself, but it is not worth anything if we cannot really find such operators which have this property. So um, for the second part, I will show how to construct these explicitly and even how to construct these using simply representational theory. Um, due to time manners, I will stick to the case where um, we consider the trivial representation for both. Um, the general case is analog analogous, but yeah, takes a little, more, a little, bit, little bit more time to, to explain. Okay, so the idea behind um, the construction of such, such intertwining operators is simply um, considering a, a double vibration. So we take the product of the two spaces. Um, and in this case, the Eva's Arvati composition tells us that G actually acts transitively on this space. So we have an isomorphism to G mod M, where M is simply the intersection of these two uh, groups, and therefore a natural double vibration where the projections are the natural projections. Um, now the product structure induces a point by composition as usual. So we have a natural notion of a PQ form on this, on this manifold G mod M. And in particular, since uh, if N is the dimension of G mod P, we can integrate LN forms. So N is the deg degree of the second part over the compact fiber, which is simply G mod P. And now the idea how to, to get intertwining operators is quite simple. So what we do is we fix one differential form, which will be kind of a kernel or differential kernel um, of degree L n minus K, but degree is not that important. And then um, for a K form on G mod P, we can construct a, a L form on G mod K simply as follows. So first of all, we pull alpha back along the second projection. This will be then a zero K form. 
Then we form the wedge product, which um, if you look at the degrees, will be an LN form. And as we said before, LN forms can be integrated. So we simply integrate over G mod P. And um, it is easy to see that if this initial kernel, if this fixed differential form is actually G invariant, then the um, corresponding uh, uh, intertwining oper the operator will be G equivariant and will be an intertwining operator therefore. And um, yeah, we define for all phi G invariant phi in, uh, which is a differential form L n minus K on G mod M. The intertwining operator induced by it is called Poisson transform associated to the Poisson kernel. So um, the name Poisson transform is there because um, in the case of zero n forms, it coincides with five minutes. Oh, well, okay. Um, it coincides with um, the classical Poisson transform we all know. Now, the nice thing about this construction is um, since phi is simply a gene variant differential form on a homogeneous space, it is it's determined by its value in one or in any point we have on G mod M. So in particular, if G and M are the Lie algebras, then the value of phi at this origin is an element in here and not only any element, it's an M invariant element. So there is a bijective correspondence between Poisson transforms or intertwining operators, which is constructed and the set of M invariant elements in this finite dimensional representation. So in particular, we can construct smooth intertwining operators simply by determining invariant elements in the finite dimensional representation of a, of a reductive Lie group. So we can use the, the typical tools we, you know, weight, weight um, analysis and so on and so forth. Okay, so what about uh, differential operators? Well, we can play the same game here. So we can define operators on um, the exterior, uh, the, the differential forms on G mod M. So first of all, the derivative naturally splits into DK and DP, where DK raises the first and DP the second degree. The Hodge star on G mod K is tensorial and simply lifts to G mod M. The same goes for the coast and co-differential, it simply lifts. And we define delta K and uh, the Laplace, the K Laplace in the usual way. And all these operators are G equivariant. So naturally they induce M equivariant maps on the, on the um, vector space of M invariant elements in this representation. And as the name suggested and quite obvious what what the theorem will be. So if we have such a Poisson transform with kernel phi, then the composition with D and del star on G mod P, and also the composition with D, um, the uh, Hodge star, the co-differential, and the Laplace on G mod K are all again Poisson transforms, and thus um, can be again computed via, um, in, uh, via computations finite dimensional representations. So in particular for the first part, from the first part, we can um, construct BGG compatible um, intertwining operators as we had before, simply by computations of simply by linear algebra basically. And how much time? Two minutes, maybe three, two. So for the final part, I just want to show um, one example. So this is a joint collaboration collaboration with Andy Chop and Pierre Schul. So we take uh, G, the, S, uh, the special unitary group of um, in, in signature M plus one one. So G mod K is the complex hyperbolic space and G mod P is the CR sphere. And in this case, the BG complex coincides with the Roma complex. So if we take H to be the contact sum bundle and Q the quotient, then we have um, the short exact sequences simply by taking the exterior power of the sequence defining Q. And um, if you, since in this case, the, the associated Lie algebra is two graded, the coast and co-differential induces bundle maps from the kth exterior power of the dual of H to this bundle. 
And this is surjective for k smaller or equal than, than n and injective for k greater or equal than n plus one. So the homology bundles in this case are sub bundles for um, below half the dimension and quotients of this bundle for k bigger or equal than um, n plus one. So in this case, the homology bundles behave quite differently if we, if we take um, degrees low, below the half the dimension or above half the dimension. And this will be, I guess, my last slide. Um, so if we do this construction and, and go through uh, trying to construct G compatible um, um, Poisson transforms, then we have the following result. So if we are below half the dimension and if we consider complex uh, value differential forms, then um, there is a unique BGG compatible Poisson transform below half the dimension, which maps P plus Q forms into PQ forms on G mod K. And the induced map is, of course, harmonic because that's what we showed, but it's also co closed and primitive. So the images are also co closed and primitive. Whereas um, above half the dimension, there is a two parameter family of Poisson transforms. So there's quite a different behavior, which, we, which reflects the different behavior of the homology bundles. And the images are again harmonic, of course, co primitive, and satisfy this relation regarding the. Um, the uh, co differential or the holomorphic and anti holomorphic part of the co differential, to be precise. And maybe one more. Um, we can use these if we want to consider real value differential forms. We can just take nice linear combinations of these. And this is kind of our main theorem. So, um, in the previous case, so in the case of G being SU n plus 1, 1. Um, there is a family of Poisson transforms so that, so that the induced maps satisfy, first of all, that their image is harmonic, co-closed, and primitive below half the dimension, co-primitive above half the dimension. And also for the BGG operator, we have this relation where CK is just a constant, which is never zero. And uh, yeah, so in this case, there is not only the harmonic harmonicity on the on the image, but we have a lot more um, automatically induced um, properties uh, regarding the geometry on G mod K. Okay, some references. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Christoph. Any questions? Hi, to me. Maybe I could ask a question. Where well, this uh, classical oh, representation theory occurs really is this linear algebra part. Could you tell us more precisely in oh. the proofs? What do you mean? You said that uh, you, you, you come down to classical representation theory for the proofs, but I did not catch where it appears. No, not for the proofs, for the construction of For the, the construction. For the construction, yeah. So the, the idea is basically you can. Um, uh, every Poisson transforms correspond just to M invariant elements and 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 also the compositions with differential operators correspond to um, M equivariant maps. So if you want, for example, to you can design um, so by by analyzing where is it? Um, this representation. You can design your favorite Poisson transform, you know, you can, for example, Look for Poisson transforms or for intertwining operators which are closed and co closed. Or you can also, of course, prove that they don't exist in this way. More questions? Yeah, maybe I'll ask a quick question here. Um, uh, very nice talk, uh, Christoph. So, um, just so here, you, here you've been talking about the trivial representation, right? Um, but if you if you talk, so your input being on the on the codomain side, some representation v and then some representation w on the codomain side. Um, I guess my question is just uh, so you have your k, like just how 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 are there lots of such intertwining operators? Like like uh, can I fix any k and then you have an l? that depends as a function of k and the, the different representations you've selected or are they quite rare depending on the different representations that you've selected i guess do you have some sort of classification type uh, results there no the problem is here um it 
it really depends on first, um, of course, G, um, on on yeah, on G and on the representation you choose. So, yep. um, for example, um, in the real hyperbolic case, so if mm -hmm. you take just real valued um, Poisson transforms between um, uh, the conformal sphere and the, and the real hyperbolic space, there are just four such intertwining operators up to multiples, of course. Um, I see. Okay. Yep. If you go to the complex hyperbolic space, you can basically get, so in, in this case, we have the end. Mm -hmm. If we skip, uh, if we, if we, um, if you don't want BGG compatible ones, but any Poisson transform you can, can get from any degree to any degree. It's okay. Simply because yep. the, the, um, in, in the, in the real hyperbolic case, you're one graded. Yep. The V algebra and here we are two, two graded and in the one graded case, there is not much there to work with, basically. So right, 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 right. So so the, so yeah. So good. Go ahead. Yeah, and and so so in the, in, the, in the one graded case, m is just S O. You have um, g plus minus one is R n. So you have the canonical pairing there. You have the grading <laughs> element, which is invariant, and basically <laughs> everything is generated by those two. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, like everything ultimately boils down to this this representation theory. Problem, I guess, right? But but uh, have you resolved the representation theory problem, like in, in general, or you you've so in this in this uh, for these this example, of course, it's very interesting, and you, you you've done it in that case. But has the has the complete representation theory problem been no done? Okay, 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 okay. So we, thank you. So yeah. I uh, I constructed so there is a Poisson transform if you um. If, under minor conditions, there is always one. You can always construct mm -hmm. one. You can yep. also show that in general, there cannot be more because this is precisely the case of the real hyperbolic space. Mm -hmm. But um, in general, you have to really do a case by case analysis. And also, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. So we, we still also don't know if there is also a PGG compatible one. So this also has to be resolved. If there's a PGG, okay, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, great, thank you. Okay, unfortunately, we don't have time for more questions right now. So let's thank the speaker again.